Hello, today we're looking at something called specific heat capacity. But before we do that, let's take a quick look at what we mean by heat capacity. And it's all to do with energy transfers and the heat capacity of a substance. So we talk about heat capacities with connection to different substances. But the heat capacity is the energy needed, the energy required to raise the temperature of a substance by one degrees centigrade. So it's the energy needed to raise the temperature by one degree centigrade. Now it's very important at this stage that we make a difference or explain that there's a difference between energy and temperature. Energy and temperature are not the same thing. And we can take a quick look at a graph to help us understand that. If we supply energy to a substance, we can imagine that the temperature would rise. So the more energy, the higher the temperature rise. Now that's not always the case, sometimes we can have an energy input without a temperature rise and we're going to look at that in later videos. But generally if you add energy or you transfer energy to a substance the temperature will rise. Now what is specific heat capacity? Well it's very similar to heat capacity but we have to be a little bit more specific in terms of the amount of that substance. So it's basically the same thing but we need one kilogram of the substance. And this is useful because we can then compare the heat capacities of different materials if we always compare with one degree uh, sorry with one kilogram okay so um it's also important to remember that the energy the specific heat capacity is different for different substances not all substances require or have the same amount of energy needed to raise the temperature by one degree centigrade so we could take a look at an example here we've got two materials one is copper so that's literally a block of one kilogram of copper. And the second one there is aluminium. And we can measure the temperature for each of those as we input some energy. And that would be energy through a heater. We could transfer that energy and measure how much of that energy is required to raise the temperature by one degree centigrade. For copper, it's 385 joules. And for aluminium, it's more than double. It's 897 joules. And the unit there for specific heat capacity is joules per degree centigrade per kilogram. So we can see there that the aluminium requires much more heat energy to raise the temperature by one degree centigrade. We can take a look at another substance and that would be water. So if you were to have a guess or imagine what that might be, is it higher or lower than aluminium and copper? Well, in fact, the specific heat capacity of water is a massive 4,200 joules per degree centigrade per kilogram. And this is actually very useful in living things because this will help to maintain a stable temperature. So humans and most animals are mostly water. Lots of animals and plants live in water. And the fact that it takes a lot of energy to change the temperature will keep that temperature stable and not interfere with the bodies of living things. So. Um, that's the meaning of specific heat capacity and how we use it to compare different materials. What we're going to look at now is an equation to help us do some calculations based around the idea of specific heat capacity. So here's an equation to calculate energy transfer using specific heat capacity. And this is actually given to you in the exam, so you don't need to memorize this. And you'll have it in front of you on the equations sheet. What's not given to you is the unit for each one of the quantities. So for mass it's kilograms, as we should know by now. For specific heat capacity, that's slightly unusual in that it's joules per degree centigrade per kilogram, but still quite logical. And for temperature change, it's degrees centigrade. In terms of our thermal energy, well, we're talking about energy, so it's going to be in joules. The word thermal meaning heat. And so that's in joules with a capital J. Okay, so uh, if you forget this unit here, it's quite easy to remember. It's joules per degree C per kilogram by looking at the other units, which are easier to remember. You might also see it in your exam or on the equation sheet like this, and it looks slightly more complicated, but it's literally the same thing. That's change in thermal energy, that's mass, that's specific heat capacity, and that's temperature change. It's probably worth mentioning here that that little symbol at the end there is called theta and it stands for the temperature. And that triangle there, often used in maths, that means change in. That's actually a delta. Okay, so we see the change in energy and the change in temperature in our equation.
So that little triangle symbol there is delta, it's a Greek letter, and the symbol on the end, theta, is also a Greek letter, which means temperature. Okay, so here we could do a straightforward example using our equation above, and we've got a question that's asking us to calculate the energy transferred to 0 0.5 kg of water when the temperature rises by 20 degrees centigrade, and it gives us the specific heat capacity of water. When you get a question like this in the exam, probably useful to underline the key parts. You should not take a highlighter in, but you certainly be able to underline parts in questions. So it's a simple case of mass times specific heat capacity times the temperature change. So that's 0 0.5 times 4,200 times 20. And if we work that out, we get an answer of 42,000. And it's because and because we're working out the energy transfer, the energy, it's in joules, and that can be written also as 42 kilojoules, 42,000 joules being 42 kilojoules. Let's have a look at a couple more questions. So this is still quite straightforward, but there's a couple of tricky bits that you've got to watch out for in the exam. We could take this equation across because we're going to be allowed to have that in the exam. We've got 250 grams of water, We've got a start temperature and a final temperature, and we've got a specific heat capacity of water. First thing is that the mass of the water is given to us in grams, so we need to convert to kilograms by dividing by 1,000. So here's our kilograms now, 0 0.25. The temperature change is 28 minus 21, because that's the temperature rise, and that would be 7 degrees centigrade, and the specific heat capacity is given there. So now we can go ahead and use our equation. So it's the energy transferred is 0 0.25 times 4,200 times a temperature rise of 7, and that will give us an answer of 7,350 joules, or 7.35 kilojoules. Okay, now for the last question, slightly trickier, not the hardest kind of question that you'll get in GCSE physics, but it is certainly slightly trickier because we've got, to, we've got to rearrange an equation. So here's our key bits of information. We've got a temperature rise of 50 to 62, which will be our delta theta or our change in temperature. And that's going to be 12, 62 take away 50 is 12. We've got another tricky bit here. We've got 3,500 kilojoules which is the heat transferred, so we have to convert that into joules, so that would be 3,000, sorry, 3.5 million. Just multiply 3,500 by 1,000 to find out the joules. And then we've got to calculate the mass of water, so that means we've got to rearrange our equation. Now, you might be comfortable with rearranging equations and not find that too tricky, so you could actually do it that way. You could have your delta E, or your energy transferred, and that would be specific heat capacity divided by the change in temperature. And I'd put the bottom in brackets and multiply that out first um, to get the right answer. But uh, what I tend to like to do is just put in the numbers into the equation and rearrange at the end, because you'll have fewer numbers to rearrange. So there's our energy transfer, 3.5 million, time uh, is equal to, sorry, mass times 4,200 times our 12 degrees. So if we work out 4,200 times 12, then can simplify that slightly. So we have the energy transferred is mass times 50,400, and that's slightly easier, very slightly easier to rearrange. So it's 3.5 million divided by 50,400, and that gives us an answer of 69.4 recurring. So we could just leave that as 69.4, and we're looking for the mass, so that's 69.4 kilograms and if you look at the question we're talking about heating water in a tank so 70 kilograms sounds about right so we're probably in the right ballpark probably got the right answer there okay so that's the meaning of specific heat capacity an equation and a couple of examples